Hello and welcome back to Dial Leech for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand, Calder Nest. This is episode 269. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. Like I said, I'm your host, Calvin S. Joining me in the studio today and for a while is my brand new co host, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Rowdy, rowdy, let's get howdy. <laughs> Is that all right? Can I take that's, that catchphrase? That's, you're not allowed, actually. Uh, <coughs> uh, all, all iterations of Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy and their accompanied uh, family members are trademarked by uh, Sexy Ranch and LLC. Oh. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, Brandy co-host, Simeon Bruce, very, very happy to have you here. We are going to go ahead and go into what made us happy this week. Simeon, you want to start us off? I will. Uh, you know, I had an easy week at work last week. Um, just not a lot to do. So we got caught up on like a lot of cleaning stuff. And then I heard that Calder won for the fourth year in a row, the junior rodeo. So, I mean, I don't know why they keep letting you in with like, you know, those like 16 and under crowd, but congrats, man. They, they just don't know how to ride, uh, ride bulls or wrestle steers like I do. They, they don't have the weight to throw around. So, you know, you got to show them what's up. You got to be a good example. I've got a bunch of buckles. The belts don't actually fit me. They're made for uh, smaller people, but I just I throw the buckles on a new belt. It's pretty easy. Oh, yeah. You just yeah. wear them over your shoulder like the yeah. WWE. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Sadly, the, the belts aren't that big. Um, it's really the buckle that's the, the main thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, I haven't competed in a junior rodeo. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Uh, what made me happy this week is I forget to turn my phone ringer off, and that goes. Uh, don't worry, folks. I know people. Uh, people have already messaged me. Like two or so people have already messaged me. Like, is the podcast gonna happen this week? I'm like, yeah, don't worry, it's gonna happen. Uh, it might be a little weird for a bit. Uh, don't worry about it. Getting getting into many things. What made me happy this week was I have been feeling incredibly nostalgic uh, for Legos recently. As weird as that might sound, uh, I used to. It was it was my number one uh, toy as a kid. I spent all of my money on it as much as I could, and uh, yeah, I joined a. I'm in pretty much every uh, crap posting group. It's a nice way to say it, like on Facebook. So like Sith posting, Shield posting, etc. I joined Lego set posting just to see, and it got me super nostalgic. I have not bought a Lego set in like probably, um, well, only a year since I had Infinity War, but like actually bought and built a Lego set in like. Uh, Exactly seven years. Avengers movies were the last ones I bought. And I went out and I bought a Ninjago mech and an Exoforce mech off eBay. Exoforce came out in 2007. It was my all-time favorite Lego line. Uh, this was before I was corrupted by Japanese culture and started watching anime. But it was a very anime-inspired mech line, whatever. And, like, I went out and I spent, I blew a ton of money on, like, old Lego sets that are, like, 12 years old. Uh, but that's okay because it made me happy this week. So that's all that matters. We are going to get a little bit of familiarity with Simeon here. Simeon, uh, I just want to – you've been on the podcast before, so everybody pretty much knows, but most people, they might not. So we're going to go ahead. Tell us where you're from again and where you play. I'm from the middle of Nebraska, which is the middle of the middle of the United States, the the true center. Um, that, that false, technically, but uh, keep, well, going. keep going. I mean, geography. Uh, I play in Omaha, uh, Nebraska, which we host a lot of uh, WKOs, some ROC events. Um, we team up with the South Dakota guys, and we head over to Des Moines sometimes in Kansas City. So nice little like Midwestern kind of circuit that we've got going. Heck yeah. And if your house, apartment, whatever, burned down, what would be one, I know this has got a really heavy question, what would be one hero click you would save? Oh, man. One, it would definitely be one of, like, the Colossals. So it would either be the Serpent or, like, Galactus. Oh, which Galactus is that? Uh, the, like, the 
cheaper one, <laughs> the like uh, Galactic Guardians one. Or, okay, as long as it's not like Zombie yeah. Galactus or something lame, you know. No, I've got him okay. too, but I'd I, be going for like the tall one. Heck yeah, heck yeah. All right, well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Simeon, uh, for joining me this week and for undecided amount of weeks to come. We are going to get right into the news section. Uh, I know everybody loves back-to-back bumpers, uh, so we're going to talk about, uh, there's two things of news, X-Men and Star Trek. We're going to start off with our picks from the brand new Star Trek set. I've written my next poem in honor of my cat. I call it Ode to Spot. All right, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the first one. There's a figure I was excited to see previewed uh, because I don't know anything about Star Trek at all. I definitely don't know anything about the next generation. Uh, but Mir William Riker is what I went ahead and chose. The only reason is because it's the Suns Out, Guns Out alternate universe, and that's it. That's literally it. It looks really cool. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, top dial. He has no special combat symbols. He has six range. He can be played at 100 or 75 points. He has Soldier Spy in the Mir Universe keyword Simeon. The, okay, never mind. It's right here. Mir Universe team ability is Mystic team ability. Uh, do the attacker one penetrating damage after resolution of an attack. All right, cool. Uncopyable. So it's already still copied. uncopyable. Still yeah. uncopyable. Rip. Sorry, guys. Um, really, really a shame. He has three traits. Uh, the first one is opportunistic. Op. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna say op maneuver. It's opportunistic, but whatever. Free once per turn for all characters that can use this trait, which I believe is only mirror people, right? Uh, only mirror people and only from this set. So only yeah, the set. okay. There was a few mirror people from uh, the away team set. but They didn't have the oppor- opportunistic maneuver blah. No, they were boring. <laughs> Lame. Uh, so free once per turn for all characters that can use this trait. Choose a friendly character that took two or more damage from a single attack since your last turn. You may place mirror William Riker within six squares and line of fire of the opposing character that made that attack. You may then replace mirror William Riker with another character that can use the opportunistic op- Blah, blah, blah. The maneuver trait from your sideline on the same click number. So you can keep all these mirror guys on your sideline. I assume there's only going to be two more in the next set if it's the same as this set where you only have two chases. Yeah, it cool? looks like Jordy and Captain uh, Jean-Luc I'm are going to so be the ready. other two. I'm so ready for that Jordy. He looks awesome. He's with the like giant cannon yeah. under his arm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up is advancing through the ranks when this character is placed by a character's use of the opportunistic maneuver trait until your next turn. This character has opposing characters in six squares and line of fire. Uh, sorry, not line of fire. Just six squares can't use team abilities. So whenever you replace them, each character has this. And as, as soon as you bring them in, then that character just can't use team abilities, which is pretty dope. And then his last trait is mirror mirror shape change. When mirror William Riker uses shape change and succeeds, give him a mirror token. And if he fails... Remove all mirror tokens. When he uses shape change, increase the result by plus one for each mirror token. A roll of one always fails. It's a nice little caveat. Now, those are all traits that every mirror person has. Uh, all two of them. So that's cool. His top dial looks something like charge with nine speed, 11 attack with quake, 18 defense combat reflexes, and three damage with special damage power. He has combat reflexes for his first three clicks, as well as quake for his first three, charge for his first two, that special damage power for his first three. Uh, his last four clicks have sidestep, and then his last three clicks all have the same power set, which is persistent strike, toughness, and close combat expert. So it's pretty cool. His attack never del- dips below a 10. His damage value never goes below a 2, and he can always do uh, three or more damage. And we're going to go ahead and check out his damage power he has for his first three clicks. Beat the respect into you. When Mir William Riker hits an opposing character with two action tokens, he deals penetrating damage. When Mirror William Riker damages an opposing character with an attack, after resolution, give that character an action token. So, this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, if you were to give them an action token, would they then be dealt the penetrating damage? I don't think so, right? Like, if he gave uh, them another one and then they had two because of his, uh, whatever, his attack, I don't think it would trigger the first part of the trait. Yeah, I think the attack resolves, and so then, yeah, he's not, he'd have to hit him twice, basically, okay. but... 
Cool. So he can still, like, run up, quake everybody, and then give them a bunch of action tokens, which is really cool. Uh, the note in Dom is quite a bummer, and he, he's relatively squishy from range. You better be hoping your shape change rules are on fire, but I just wanted to talk about him. He's definitely a character I want. I really like the soldier keyword, and I think he's just really cool for what he does. Uh, Simeon. Yeah, soldier's solid. Uh, he's got, like, the pseudo, like, retaliator kind of thing. Right. And if you're, like, competitive, you could possibly do, like, a soldier theme, and it'd be, like, expensive, but you just leave him in the back, and if they kill one of your guys, he retaliates and, like, calls in something or just shoots. I mean, either way, I think it's cool. Um, so side tangent for this guy. These Mirror Universe guys never actually showed up in the actual series and Next Gen. They were never, like, it was never an on-screen presence that they had. This was an IDW comic, and IDW has, like, a ton of licenses for uh, shows that, like, got canceled, and they continue. So, like, you remember that show Jericho? I sure don't. They're like, all right. <laughs> well, they, some fans sent in, like, a bunch of peanut butter. It's a weird story. Some fans sent in, like, a bunch of peanut butter because it got canceled. It got renewed because, like, they were like, hey, we got, like, a ton of peanut butter, and this is weird. So here's season two of Jericho. And then it got canceled immediately after. Well, IDW is the kind of company that then makes like season three and four of that show in comic form. They also make Transformers comics, G.I. Joe comics, and My Little Pony comics, Ooh. which is strange because if you remember back when we had that announcement like months ago, those were like three properties that uh, WizKids got their hands on for like board game stuff. Those may or may not be the exact three properties that they talked yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I definitely didn't, you know, just skimp over all the other ones, but no, I just I just thought that was kind of interesting. Probably doesn't mean anything, but it was interesting to me. So for th- just play the X Files theme. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go into your Star Trek preview. So what I picked was Captain Jean-Luc Picard, number 029A. He is the one in the chair that is not Q. Um, honestly, a little disappointed because he doesn't have flight, and a lot of his stuff is about like him being on the Enterprise, and he's got like he's got phasing top dial or he's got phasing later dial. Um, I'll just go in order. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, he's got a trait. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. That's uh, this weird episode where he had to communicate with this race that only communicated in, like, metaphors. And so, like, if they wanted to tell you something, they had to, like, tell you a story, like a tiny story about their culture. Anyhow, basically the trait is just saying how good he is at communicating with people. Uh, It's leadership. When Captain Jean-Luc Picard uses it and removes an action token from a friendly character, choose a keyword that character has. Captain Jean-Luc Picard gains that keyword. I don't like this trait. It it does nothing for me. Um, Honestly, like, I'm never going to put him on a team that's not Federation. And I don't, or not Starfleet, I guess. Uh, That's his keyword. Starfleet, politician, 125 points, 6 range. Um... I don't see myself ever playing him on a non-Starfleet team and needing to steal the keywords. All right, he starts with sidestep, precision strike, invincible, and a special damage power, diplomacy. Diplomacy says, uh, perplex, if Captain Jean-Luc Picard uses it to positively modify an opposing character's defense, give that character a pact token. Characters with a pack token modify their attack minus one and defense plus one. When a character with a pack token makes an attack, after resolutions deal that character one penetrating damage and remove all pack tokens from them. So basically for a turn, you're giving your opponent a plus two defense, but they get a minus one attack. Um, this is going to be used on like only a main attacker. Uh, like if you use it on like a little Borg drone, they're just going to use like a different one and not worry about that one or they'll just attack with it anyhow and take the one penetrating. It's an interesting little power. It's, um, I don't think it's worth its point cost, but it's really interesting. 
I'm hoping that the next Picard that we get is pretty cool. Okay, right. On click four, he gets phasing teleport as power. When Captain Jean-Luc Picard uses it after resolutions, he may make a range attack with a range value of two and modifying damage plus one. That means he'll have four damage. Um, also, the range value of two is, I mean, the the flavor text is the Picard maneuver, which is, uh, Calder, do you want to know what the Picard maneuver is? Yeah, it's just, just let me have it. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, already strapped in for the Star Trek, I guess. <laughs> All right, so he was getting blasted. He was in uh, – this wasn't in the Enterprise. This was uh, Stargazer, I think he was in, his ship before the Enterprise. And he's, like, taking a bunch of, like, heavy damage from an enemy ship. And so he invents this maneuver off the top of his head where he slams the ship into warp drive for, like, a half a second, just enough time to make it jump, like, right next to the other ship. And for that half a second, it looks like there's two – ships so the enemy fires at the original position thinking that's where the ship still is but really he's in the new spot like right next to him and he just unloads all their their photon torpedoes and their phasers and all that stuff okay. it's all right okay <laughs> it's, it's all right um so it teleports behind you kid like is that pretty yeah much? okay it would have been super cool if they let him use his pulse wave that he has on that click with it. Um, it would have also been super cool if they gave him, like, flight or the ability to carry some people. Or I just – I so badly want a vehicle for Starfleet. They are so hard to maneuver onto the field. There, there's no one to carry these people. Like, they just all have to walk, and their whole thing is being on a ship. It's so dumb. And, like, his dial, like, he is invincible and whatever. C- clearly, he's meant to be on the Enterprise. I imagine, anyways. I don't know anything about Star Trek, but... I mean, half of his powers kind of mention it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just weird. We've got, like, a lot of TK. They gave us a lot of phasing in this, but it's like... So, when they in the show, when they go on the transport... They don't, like, punch in the buttons and send themselves down to the planet. There's one person that sends them, and uh, I'll get into a character that might do that later, I guess. Um, do we want to jump into the WizKids whoopsie-doo that happened? Yeah, let's do it. Let's... All right, so to boldly go accidentally got spoiled. Um, at least the sculpts did. So when... WizKids dumped all of the uh, digital renderings of the sculpts. They accidentally dropped all of the To Boldly Go ones as well. So we've got 1 through 22 of To Boldly Go. Uh, We also got the box art. So we've got the entire set list, at least in image form. We don't know what the dials are yet. But let's go over the images, Calder. Yeah, absolutely. So this is probably best if you follow along. Obviously, if you're in your car, please don't look up HC Realms and uh, while you're driving, just to listen to this podcast. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and check these out later. There, it will be a link in the podcast description. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check these out and definitely try to follow along if you can. So first up, um, what is this guy? We got forehead guy who's looking at the sky and he's cursing why he was born into existence on this cruel, cruel world. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. It's clearly a Klingon. Uh, he is not armed, surprisingly, which probably means that he's a named Klingon. I'm going to guess it's Worf's brother. I cannot remember his name. I cannot speak Klingon. It's probably like Cthulhu or something yes. super cool like that. I love this next one. It's it's the same guy, but instead of he has his cursing god hand, he has a sword, dagger hand or whatever. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> It's almost the exact same sculpt. Uh, almost. <laughs> he's wearing the exact same outfit. Uh, this is, I'm guessing this is Worf from uh, when he goes back to his home planet and does, like, some challenge stuff. Um, I'm guessing he's got a dagger, so he's probably got, like, six range and pen blast. Now he's probably got blades. Okay, <laughs> Um, this next guy, great, another Klingon. He has both the cursing of the sky hand and his other hand instead has a big old sword, which I can dig. Yeah, that's hard to say. Um, Is it this could be a lot of things, but 
Maybe. No. No, uh, I'm guessing this is either a generic or it might be like the reenactment of the Klingon god. There's a episode where Worf takes his son to like the home planet and they watch this like little play put on, but I don't remember him using a sword. I'd have to rewatch it. I'm guessing it's just generic Klingon guy. All right, nice. Probably I has blades. <laughs> <laughs> I assume most of them do. Uh, this fourth Klingon, um, I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what he's holding. It's, That's a bat lift. Yeah, obviously. Bat, bat lift. I should have known that. What am I doing? Yeah, it's it's uh, clearly superior to a sword. Uh, it's like way. it's like an axe that's harder to hold. Um, guy probably has blades. Now, this guy's just... I don't know. He's got big old ears, and he's holding a droid. All right. This one actually... This is actually a named character. This is Damon Bach. Um, he's going to have something interesting. So the thing he's holding gave Captain Picard these, like, weird visions of being on his old ship. He basically, like, mind-controlled Captain Picard for, like, a whole episode. And the whole reason was, uh, in, like, an earlier encounter, Captain Picard killed his son. And so this guy, like, had, like, 14 years of, like, revenge planning against Picard. So that's, yeah. Oh, and the big ear guys, they're all Ferengi. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So yeah, they're, uh, yeah. They're Ferengi. Um, so like, so this guy had 14 <laughs> years to get revenge on someone, and he was like, um, hallucination ball. Like, okay. Yep. Yep. He's nice. like pain ball that makes you feel like you're in a place that's on fire. What a what a great. I'm loving it already. Uh, next up, we have yellow Starfleet guy with a with an iPad. I'm hoping that this is O'Brien. Um, he was oh, the yeah, transport. <laughs> Although, if we got a super chin, Conan O'Brien, that'd be, you know. Oh, here we go. Uh, no, O'Brien was the uh, the transporter dude, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what his actual title was, but he ran the transporter a lot. So I'm super hoping that this guy's got something like power action, like TK, like four Starfleet guys, you know, like six squares away. I'm hoping against hope that he's got something to get Starfleet moving. Okay, so This is Jordy LaForge. I know this one. Red Jordy LaForge. Uh, Red yep. Rainbow guy. We can, yeah, sweet. We did it. All right. So now we have... No, this is Worf, right? With his... This is what Worf. What you call it? The sh Shimitar? The, what was it again? <laughs> the Batlip. The Batlip, yeah. Totally same thing. Yeah, okay. So this is definitely... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm tracking. I mean, I'm tracking, folks. It's I'm like two scimitars put together pretty, with, yeah, like, a... It's like a big backwards pizza cutter almost. Yeah, dude, it's so Or it's like brass knuckles for a giant that they hold the wrong hand, way. The handles make no sense on this thing. I don't... Um, next dude is Jean-Luc uh, Picard. Jean, whatever. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, okay. Got yeah, it. it's attack mode Picard. He's got a phaser pointed and no idea what he's going to do. This is probably just a generic Ferengi. Um, he's got a blaster. Thank you for so, saying it. I honestly forgot their name. I was like, ha, oh, figure guy again. <laughs> Guess what the next one is, Calder. Uh, is, is there a Ferengi, but he's got a whip, so he's like, I don't know, yeah. is like Beastmaster Ferengi or something? <laughs> like, what? So the, the first time they run into him, they've got these weird energy whips, and they like have to whip it to like shoot their like laser beam out. Oh, yeah. And it's like so inefficient that they just completely abandoned that prop for the rest of the series. That's it was... <laughs> We Only the one episode I remember. Oh, uh, that's this guy's the exact same. Like, right? Like, he's just different colors or something. So he's like, yeah. So I'm guessing thing. the grayish blue one is like Ferengi commander, and then the brown one is Ferengi soldier. I have no oh, idea. Sure. <laughs> um, I love this guy. Uh, forehead guy, <laughs> slick black hair, and he's clearly wearing armor, but like under a skin tight shirt and pants or like whatever this is supposed to be. It's like vacuum formed armor on him. Yeah, so these are the Cardassians. Um, they're one of the only aliens that show up in Next Gen that aren't part of the Federation. And it actually, the conflict with the Cardassians actually spawns like some of the spinoff shows. So um, really, I don't know what to say about this guy. Oh, okay. Like they they make appearances, but so, pretty shows, are those by any chance called Keeping Up with the Cardassians? 
Yes, actually. Ah, I knew it. Um, no, no. I had a hunch. Uh, <laughs> next one is just like, what is it, al- albino Cardassian? Yeah, they come in different flavors. Oh, okay. So the, the first one was strawberry, this one's vanilla. And this guy and is, I, is more of a, I don't know, like an orange <laughs> sherbet kind of going on. Yeah, yeah. Now, they all, it's exactly same sculpt. <laughs> exactly. They all have the gun. It's just like different paint job. And so there's no way for me to tell. There's a few named Cardassians. Uh, and I don't, <laughs> I can't like for sure say of, if any of, of them are uh, one of them. Kim and Chloe Cardassian. We, we know all the Cardassians. Come on now. Um, yeah. Next up is, I like this sh- uh, shoulder pads lady. Now, this is the height of 80s fashion going on. She has the Yu-Gi-Oh necklace, um, and then these great shoulder pads, elf ears, and a phaser. It's just, it's too much. <laughs> so, I want to say this has got to be a Romulan, because I don't remember a whole lot of Vulcans showing up in Next Gen. Uh, I just don't remember any female Romulans either, and it's weird because the next one after that is just a re-sculpt female Romulan holding, like, a tricorder or something. Right. And so you've got shooty one. You've got, like, probably, like, Romulan scientist or something. Um, you've got other shooty one. I'm sure one of these has a name as well. Oh, I just probably. My, my favorite is blonde Romulan scientist. This one is just great. They actually changed their face sculpt. Like, oh, wow, different hairstyles. Well, this one actually does have a story. So oh. Tasha Yar, which we did get a Tasha Yar in this last set. She was a rare. Um, it's a really long story, but I'm going to, I'm going to go into it because I know Calder wants to hear it. I can't wait. <laughs> so Tasha Yar actually dies like two seasons into next gen. Um, we'll get, they actually have the image of the, creature that kills her in these uh i'll tell you when we get to that one um but due to some like timey wimey weird stuff that star trek always got into um a like rift in space time was opened up and a different ship that wasn't the enterprise got like shot through it and it was from like 40 years in the past and the crew of the enterprise are like hey like what were you doing before you got shot through that time portal thing and they were defending a Klingon outpost from Romulans, and it wasn't going well. There was three Romulan warbirds versus the ship, and yada yada. Um, basically, it like back to the futures, the Enterprise. And since that ship was never there to defend the Klingon outpost, oh, Calder, are you sleeping? Huh? huh. No, no, keep oh, okay. going. I'm, no, no, uh, keep going. I like that. <laughs> Basically, to cut a long story short, um, the Tasha Yar from, like, the diff- the alternate timeline goes back with the ship back in time to, like, the f- like 40 years ago. And she gets captured by Romulans and ends up having a daughter with one of them. And that's this character. She shows up for a episode. I cannot, for the life of me, tell you what she could possibly do because, honestly, I... Like, they don't show her doing a whole lot in the show that I remember. She so, makes a Klingon pay child support <laughs> at the beginning of every turn. Yeah, if they have that keyword. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that, that was uh, riveting. I love Star Trek. Uh, next up is Albert Einstein in a nice three-piece suit. Is that any, any at all correct? No. <laughs> I was really bad uh, on it, too. I think you're off by, like, 70 years or something. This is Mark Twain. Mark Twain! Oh, wow. Okay, so literary genius myself okay well right on that's so cool though so i was actually corrected because i was under the impression i found these in like the same uh the same whiz kids post that everyone else did so i just assumed he was in the set but if you look at the box art on the sides of the gravity feed he is not listed which either means he's a like piece that got completely scrapped or he's a future con piece okay uh I'm down for either because, honestly, I'd just love to see Mark Twain in Heroclix form. I, I kind of want as many real, like, life people as possible in here. Like, yeah. Like, could... like, sure, technically Jean-Luc Picard is, you know, whatever, Charles Xavier, blah, 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 blah. But, like, actually named, you know, like, that is just straight up as Mark Twain. Like, that's really cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah. You, you can kind of kind of build a team like Muhammad Ali is just like straight up like that's just Muhammad Ali like so I think those are always really cool figures to get 
Ghost um, of Abraham Lincoln. Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Like, that's, like, sort of... Excuse me. I mean, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Professional here this podcast here, folks. Uh, that's, like, sort of, like, around it, like, pretty much, you know? Um, so I'll take it. Like, it's it's still cool. So that was Mark Twain. That means this guy is Oscar Wilde. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, dang it. So I... It's really weird, because since it's a re-sculpt, Mark Twain's standing in front of uh, the hollow deck door. Yeah. Which does not make any sense. Um, For this character. That should not. Yeah. So that, I mean, they co- totally could have just taken the hollow deck. I mean, granted, it could just be any door on the Enterprise, but that's definitely a hollow deck door, especially because the next guy is Professor Moriarty. And, okay, that's what he is. Okay, so he's more. Yeah. So that goes with I was, our, uh, I was waiting for you to gasp. Data. I thought you were going to be like, yeah. <gasps> yeah, I revealed it. It's when you said next guy, as soon as you said next guy, I clicked and I looked at this thing of sludge and I was like, oh, that's what Moriarty Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, the so previous no, next guy. Uh, yeah, the previous next guy. Uh, yeah, that's cool. So he goes with our uh, Holmes data, which is neat. Yeah. Is Hopefully like we get a actually Doherty Moriarty, that spots him, but. He is a hollow deck version of Moriarty, so it's like Jordy uh basically Data was going through some Sherlock Holmes like hollow novels, I think is what they call them. Which is just like you play as like a person in a novel. And he knew all the stories, so he instantly like knew the end to all of the stories. And so Jordy tried to give him a challenge and created this Moriarty by accident who had like all the access to the computer that Data had. And so at one point, he actually, like, stops the Enterprise in its tracks, and I don't know, he gets he gets pretty crazy in a few episodes. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, tell me about, uh, tell me about BP oil spill guy. <laughs> all right, this is Armus. This is the guy that killed Tasha Yar. Um, that's, that's rough. I'm sorry to hear that, Tosh.0. E- I mean, Tasha, whatever. <laughs> Uh, he, like, literally just, uh, like, psychic slapped her. She was, like, trying to walk to a down shuttle, and he just, like, slaps her away, and the doctor runs over and is like, she's dead. And she was. Like, she for was. the first time. Yeah, for the first time in Next Gen that I am aware of, like, a main character just solidly died and didn't come back. That's At least not as they were, yeah. Um so things that he would probably have a ton of barrier, and that is all I can think of. Um, probably some sort of probability control and, like, heavy damage Pensai, because he totally just wiped her out in one shot. Or she's just, like, a really paper-thin character. Like, well, I don't know, we'll have to see. Um, yep. uh, tell me about Double Doctor Manhattan here. All right, another figure that we did not have on the box art, this um, is from the same episode as Mark Twain. Uh, they find Data's head on Earth, but it's like 500 years old or something. And they're like, how did this happen? You're not 500 years old. Wagga da wagga. Like, we totally haven't dealt with time travel before. And then these two dudes call, like, just pop up and uh, start sucking people back into time by accident or not. Uh, the ones holding a little snake creature. Um so they'll have some sort of shape change, probably phasing teleport. Otherwise, they're going to look kind of like Kang the Conqueror, as far as I can tell, because that's they just pop back and forth through time, and I, they, like, eat human souls or something. It's oh, weird. I love it. I they're love called it. The, the Davidians, but you really <laughs> wouldn't learn that from watching the episode. You have to, like, dig for it. Star Trek Next Gen uh, Wikipedia. It, check it out. Yeah. Which I totally didn't do. I didn't have to. So knew off the top of my head. Uh, and last but certainly not least is the Cardassian. Uh, I'm gonna say cameraman uh, with his stage lights and <laughs> uh, remote control. All right, this one I actually do think I know. Um, Picard gets captured by a Cardassian at one point and tortured for like an entire episode, and I'm guessing that's who this guy is. I cannot remember what his name is, but. That's what those little lights are. They're like some sort of weird torture device thing. It's mostly just like watching Patrick Stewart lie on a table, like writhing in agony for. Oh, 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 oh. Where am I? Oh. <laughs> 
Okay, well, right on. I think we can all agree that's just amazing. I would love so to that's, Patrick Stewart right on. That's to that's boldly go. And that's Star and then, Trek, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Woo! we have just spoiled all the dials and all the powers that those characters will have. That's going to save us a lot of time in like a month. Uh, we don't have to do any of those then. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, uh, let's just jump on over to, uh, to X-Men, because Star Trek's over. Alas, that was Mystique, not Magneto. Magneto is in another place. Go, X-Men. I am Magneto, master of Magnet. <laughs> Come, X-Chicken. Well, that was beautiful. Um, <laughs> so, we got two previews for X-Men Animated Series Dark Phoenix Saga. One is, as you may have been able to guess, the Magneto Prime non-prime that was spoiled. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Magneto is 50 points, and it's already stupid. He has a Brotherhood of Mutants team ability. 11B. He is silver ring, so he's unique. He is He's their prime non-prime, just like the... We're assuming, just like the Space Knights were. His real name is Danger Room. He is Brotherhood of Mutants, a robot's keyword. He has three traits, no special attack, or no special powers at all. I assume pretty much all of these traits, except for the last one, or a form of these traits, are going to be available on all the Danger Room constructs, so let's just go ahead and read them. The first one is Danger Room Construct. When Magneto makes an attack, after resolutions, give him an error token for each one in the attack roll, maximum three. If Magneto has two or less error tokens, characters take a maximum of one damage from Magneto's attack. Magneto takes a maximum of one damage from an opponent's attacks, and can't be healed or chosen for Mastermind, and then it says Protected Pulse Wave. So that's kind of neat. Kind of hurts him. Kind of helps him. That's pretty cool. His second trait is Lessons from the Danger Room, Ellipses, whatever, Magneto. If Magneto is KO'd by an opponent, by opposing character, for the rest of the game, that character can use ESD. So that's pretty cool. It kind of gives a purpose, like the X-Men are training against these guys. Once they finally beat one of them, they learn something, they get energy shield deflection. And his last trait is Simulated Master of Magnetism, Force Blast, period. When Magneto knocks back an opposing character, you may choose the direction of the knockback. So this is pretty dope for, like, a lot of reasons. I cannot wait to play this guy in Battle Royales. Um, hopefully it's on, like, a crazy map with a bunch of walls, and you can just shoot anyone no matter wherever, and, like, have them, you can have them fly towards you, have them fly towards an opponent, have them hit a certain wall. It, it, it's really pretty awesome. It's better than being able to use TK after the attack. You don't have to hit them again. You just shoot them. You choose where the knockback path is, and you can move them into your guys. It's pretty dope. I like it a lot. What does this dial look like? Well... For 50 points, it's, it's stupid, is what it is. Um, so he has 8 range, 2 bolts, flight, and indomitable. He's a 5-click on dial. He's running shot through the entire dial. For his first 3 clicks, he has penetrating psychic blast. On his last 2, he has pulse wave. His attack value never goes below 10, and it's a 12, 11, 11, 11, 10. So that's pretty dope attack value for 5 clicks. His defense is toughness for his first two clicks, and then ESD for his last three. He's got an 18 on his toughness clicks and 17 on his ESD clicks. His damage is a 4 for his first two clicks, and it's a 3 on his last three clicks. He has range combat expert for the first three clicks of his life, so his top dial is looking something like running shot, 11 speed, 12 attack, pen blast, 18 defense, toughness, 4 damage, range combat expert. So... Just, just like, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong or not, but this Magneto can be called in with the Magneto ID card, or is that a negative, since his real name is not Magneto? He definitely can be. He uh, definitely can be, alright. So, yeah, real name is, like, a secondary choice on some of them, uh, but, and he's not a Prime, so, yeah. He doesn't, which is so dope, he, like, doesn't take up the Prime slot, which is so amazing, he's just unique. So he, I think, A, he's awesome. He's better than Professor X in a way, sort of give or take, because he can running shot with his pen blast. He has a 12 attack. Um, he can divide it only against two people, whether or not that be Colossals or however you want to do it, or he can also just range combat expert someone for six damage or something. I think he is, number one, I think he's an awesome call-in. Like, he should pretty much just be played as, like, a call-in. Uh, but for 50 points, a 12 attack running shot pen blast is not bad at all. He... He really, he earns his 50 points back and forth the entire time. He sort of has a risk 
with playing him when someone does kill him they do get esd for the rest of the game i don't think it's like hugely detrimental i think he's gonna be amazing in sealed he's a great uh prime non-prime to pull and overall i'm just wicked impressed with this magneto and honestly kind of aghast that whiz kids made something like this well maybe i shouldn't be but either way he's pretty dumb for first points yeah, I think robot keyword's going to get a huge bump just because these uh, unique figures. Because I'm guessing it's, yeah, like you said, it's going to be like Space Knights. Um, if you look at Sabretooth, he's 023A. So 023B is just going to be Danger Room Sabretooth, in my guess, you know. Um, I honestly, this Magneto would be solid on a main force, but... I don't think Brotherhood of Mutants is that great. But yeah, 13 square reach. That's pretty crazy. All right, let's do it. Uh, how neat is that? Uh, that's pretty neat. So I'm going to talk about the other spoiled X-Men figure that we got, which is the first Prime Colossal that we got. <gasps> uh, it is Prime Colossus. Um, surprisingly, not a Colossal. Uh, just a two by two base is what I should have said. So he comes in at 200, 150, 100 points and 25 point line. Uh, anyone that knows two by two bases, they see that 25 points and they know exactly what that means. Real name, Piotr Rasputin. I just butchered that. I don't really know what it is. Uh, don't worry, <laughs> but he's someone got, will correct you later. He's got X-Men keyword, which means X-Men now have a retaliator. Uh, he has improved movement, destroys blocking. He's got a single trait and a single special damage of power. His special trait is when Colossus uses charge after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that's adjacent to one or more debris markers that he created this turn. Since he destroys blocking, that's how you create the debris markers. It's going to be a little rough to do this because you can't end your movement in blocking. So you have to, like, charge through blocking and end and clear. But if you can pull it off with his, I mean, at most, I get, you can, without perplex, at most, he's got a four square charge. Um, also, at least, he's got a four square charge. So, uh, I mean, I guess <laughs> he just has a four square charge his entire time. Uh, his special damage power that is at every. Uh, starting line that he has, 200, 150, 125, is Colossal Retaliation. Now you face Wrath. Free. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Colossus or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. If that character is within the same row or column as Colossus, place Colossus adjacent to that character and make a close combat attack targeting all characters in the row's or columns between where Colossus began this action and his current square, regardless of adjacency. So it's kind of like a pseudo-ram retaliation thing. Um, he does have to be kind of, like, squared off with the person to do it. So it's possible that you'd, like, charge first and then do the retaliation. Um that's really, like, probably your best bet. But since he's a two-by-two, two, you've got, like, four squares that, you know, could potentially be lined up with an opposing character. Uh, at the end of his retaliation, hit characters are each dealt two penetrating damage instead of normal damage. Not the best we've ever seen, but, I mean, it's an X-Men retaliator. So it's it's going to be pretty good, so, I think. So, you know, X-Men, which are already, like, really hard to kill and already get, like, you know, a ton of free attacks. Now you're telling me they have a really choice, like really cheap point filler and retaliation. Yeah. So he costs the that exact sucks. same that as sucks. Moira That's McTaggart. Terrible. Oh, you mean Moira <laughs> McTaggart? Uh, she's never on any X Men teams. What are you talking about? No. She, no, no. she definitely doesn't have any good like way to position herself to call someone in. That's just terrible. No, no sidestep or anything yeah, like that. Nothing so be, the one thing is you can't TK him or you can't TK somebody and then call him in and retaliate, but Honestly, I think you call him in for the 11 attack, however much damage you want to bump him up to, and maybe ping some people with the uh, one penetrating damage from blocking. That's I mean, almost a better option. It's pretty great. He makes two attacks in one turn, 
uh, if they already hit someone. He's a 25-point call-in uh, that Moira can call in. So if you're using the jet or something, that's a really easy way to get the jet bumped Oh, up. yeah. You could real boy him, like... Oh, super fast. You could real boy him, like, turn one yeah. pretty easily. So, I mean, that'd just be... You don't even play him main force, and all of a sudden he's just there. Uh, we've got two Colossus IDs, so he'd take up one because he's prime. You'd only be able to play this one. Uh, he also has Mystical Keyword, so it's... I mean, you could potentially see him on a share of Strange team, even. Right on. Uh, I like him a lot. He's he's de- probably he's got to see a lot of play. I mean, there's no way he doesn't. So. Right, yeah, so I think yeah. in sealed, if you pull enough X Men, you play him at 25. If you don't pull enough extra stuff, you've got to play him at full, or at 150 at the very least, because this set is just gonna have an absolute ton of Pensai. Oh yeah. And. His lower clicks are just impervious, which is like butter for Pensai. Mmm, butter. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, so that is everything for news this week, guys. We made it. We trudged through Star Trek, and we talked about some new X-Men. So let's go ahead and get into some community. There are dozens of us. Dozens! I mean, like, at least 12. At least, at least 12. Uh, so this week's Community Tuesday's question was... With month one of her genesis in the books, who's your favorite character in the set? And is your venues format different from the standard 200-point seal uh, simian? Do you want to go ahead and answer it first? On the Facebooks, Todd Butcher says, I love Kitty Pride. Well, he says Kitty, but Kitty Pride as a character and as a figure. We did 300 sealed at our store, which isn't a bad option, but... With three boosters, you can definitely pull under 300 points. Oh, yeah. So you got to have a little supplemental in there. Awesome Dad said, that common Wolverine will not go down. I'm really hoping I pull one next month. And he's right. That common Wolverine. You're going to see common Wolverine pop up a lot. Spoiler alert. He's pretty dumb in this limited selection. Uh, well, limited selection of characters that there are. So it uh, cuts deep. Hurts a lot. Kind of sucks. But, you know. That's just the way it be sometimes. Yeah, Jeff Poyer said he's got this format where he's running. Let's see. Format was it's a three month story event because it's a summer OP. Three hundred points popper format characters only. I like it. Only X Men related characters. For example, Moira McTaggart is fine, but Thor isn't. If you have questions, please contact the judge before each event. Figures can be from the Uncanny X-Men set or newer. So you've got, what is that, two sets, three sets to choose from? Uh, yes, yeah. So With some, like... Yeah, some in Deadpool, too, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Entry price for the event is purchase of three Regenesis singles, and month one, no Regenesis figures will be allowed. Month two and up, up to three Regenesis figures allowed. Month three, up to six Regenesis figures, so they just kind of build on it each month um each player will choose a side cyclops or wolverine that's i think pretty standard across most venues um all three months will be held at the beaverton location i'm not sure where that is but i sure do love me some i i hope you guys enjoy your unique format absolutely um he is a citizen uh i didn't give uh simian the whatever patreon list so don't worry about it guys your feelings won't yeah be blame it on me it's yeah, fine yeah blame it on simian he's <laughs> the worst uh vigilante collectible said i haven't gotten my hands on one but i love the look of that kitty pride i haven't played any events for this one yet but they're following the standard format i just wish it was easier to get these pieces outside of attending the events don't worry after the three months is over or like even like month two it's just going to be but it'll flood don't worry about it don't worry about it for right now yeah i'm already swimming in them yeah geez no no joke yeah i like i have three venues here so i've done what nine boosters and then i i broke down and i bought i bought some commons online so oh my god this guy uh, no uh, yeah. Uh, we'll get into our personal answers after we read through everybody else, so just go, just keep hitting it. Peter Marshfield says, Our turnout is usually low, so we had four players. Basically, we split the gravity feed four ways and built a 300-point sealed team. Wolverine was the most abusive of the figure figures, and for that, I like him. But the best beat stick is Namor. 
I think that would be crazy fun, but also just a great way to get product. Yeah. A gravity yeah. feed split between four people. That's a lot of uh, boosters for four people. Uh, but I appreciate, I mean, you get a gravity feed a month, right? Or do you have to just one gravity feed go through? How does it work? You have to order at least a case. So your store will get two. Two, okay. But depending on the store, they might only, you know, if you only get like eight people and they only want to crack the one, then they right. might not order for the next month. Okay, right on. Um, Peter is a citizen. Next up is Bibbidi Boppity. Yeah, my property. Bryce Bangerter. I uh, said the Wolverine is a monster in low point games. So hard to kill. Him and Gambit make a great team. Our menu did 200 point sealed. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I think 200 is pretty hard for Wolverine. Uh, Chris Rizzi said, not sure since we in Australia never get to play it. And then he, he laughs, but I don't think it's real laughter. I think it's tears. Would like it's to like get the Cyclops. The Psylocke. I think I think everyone wants the Psylocke. Uh, it's the only chase that I saw that remotely looked like something I'd want, but I just really don't like the pose. I'm not I'm not chasing these chases. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm gonna have to choose a new co-host already. Sorry guys, you're getting used to it. Uh, DB said the best figure in the set is probably guess guess who Wolverine. My favorite figure from the set is Beast, great sculpt, and it's a version of Beast that offers a choice between offense or team support without making me feel like a villain for playing the Uncanny X-Men Super Rare. Mm. That is a great one. Uh, Tyler Shaw says, I really like my danger. She helped me take down a Wolverine, but the second one got me. Ours wasn't different. Um, yeah, so since Wolverine's a common, at a, like a normal sealed, you'll probably see three, and... One team might have both, so. Ugh. Oh, I just kind of threw up, ugh, threw up in my mouth a little bit there. <laughs> uh, Banzai Tree and Sapling said, the set has not dropped here in Finland yet. Oh, this is Tiemu, I believe. So, yeah, Tiemu. So, Vigilante Flay, Tiemu. I'm, like, 90% sure. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, though. Correct me. Uh, but the common Wolverine looks strong in the set's own meta, from what I've seen in the previews, hoping to pull a beast as well. But that's more for getting a newer version of it. Agreed. Uh, Matthew Esch said Magneto was a pita. Uh, I think that's a type of flatbread. Uh, Angel was threatening, is what he said. Right on. Loyal Miller said we are running 200 points sealed. I used Wolverine, Psylocke, lucky son of a gun, and Rogue. I took second due to points, but I won all three games, most of them coming down to Wolverine. I really like the beast from this set and would like to pull him in the upcoming month. I mean, you could just trade that Psylocke for, like, 17 beasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, got one more from Jeff. Uh, he's just reiterating that Common Wolverine is clearly the winning piece from the set. Just completely unbeatable. Not completely. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. In the 200-point format, I feel like he's a little too rough. Yeah, he's rough. Uh, Loa Miller was a citizen. Sorry, man. Which, uh, we're getting we're getting our bearings here. Mr. Clicks Flicks, Citizen Mr. Clicks Flicks said, Slow your roll. My venue is this Sunday, which, by the way, is Tuesday or Monday for us, guys. I'll be back with a favorite, but I really like Cyclops and Wolverine from what I've seen. Uh, Jamie was not back. He did not reply to this comment, nor did he send anything in, so he is a liar. <laughs> Just saying. That's all I've got on the That's Facebook. That's all on Facebook. Right. All right, cool. So that yep. makes it really easy. I'm going to go ahead and read through these. If you guys have heroic tiles, feel free to email in at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. It's all spelled out because I'm not going to do any of them, and you're going to be really angry at me. Marcus Zilla said that common Wolverine is a beast. And yes, we made it 300 points instead of 200 and didn't do any of the trading pieces as they suggested. So far, it's been fun. That all sounds like things that would make it not fun, but I'm glad he's having fun with it. <laughs> Rex Jungle Cat said Rare Iceman and Magneto was a fun combo. Free Barrier is always fun. We did 300 points using the full map, and everyone had a great time. Once again, uh, sounds like the opposite of, but I'm glad everyone had a good time. And Michael Fedora, no difference in 200 points. My favorite is the Magic Chase, who was able to keep me competitive for some very stiff competition. So thank you, everybody, for going into the Community Tuesday's question. We always love that kind of support. Simeon. Who is your standout figure from the set, and what style is your venue running 
Give it a quick one. I know you're going through a lot of menus. So give it a quick of like what each one is doing and then your favorite figure. So I think it's changing up for next month, but uh, the first the first seal that I did was 300 points constructed, and then each round you would open one pack and add that figure to your force. So what most people did was ran X-Men teams. Um, I saw a couple of the Headmaster Wolverines and a couple of the Headmaster Cyclopses, some Moiras, some stuff like that to beef up whatever they added. Um, I pulled the Rachel Summers. I pulled the Gambit and a Wolverine. Okay, right on. I was sitting out on the buy round when I pulled the Wolverine, so I didn't actually get to play him. Oof. Oof. Which is That's which nice. is okay because the next venue that I played at, we did we did the suggested or as close to the suggested WizKids format as possible. We did 200 points, three packs. I pulled Iceman, Wolverine, and Gambit again. Um, I ran Wolverine at his lower point cost so that I could run the other two, because at 200 points, if you don't have a couple of things going on each turn, then you're just going to get, like, swamped. And uh, that's how I beat most other teams was, well, one, Wolverine just refuses to die when he's on that theme. Like, if they don't have two or three hits lined up, and he hits that super senses, then he's just not going away anytime soon. Uh, but being able to, I really like Gambit. He's able to like swap back and forth between what he's doing. Um, Iceman was all right. There's only two hypersonic pieces in the set, I believe. Uh, so that was fun. And then my third venue, um, we did a similar thing where we had a 300 point constructed team. And then each uh, round, you got to play the full round with one of the pick, one of the pieces that you opened. So you opened all three, and then each round you decided which one to play with. I pulled Warbird, the Chase, which I'm pretending to sell for two hundred dollars. But if anyone wants to actually buy it for two hundred, I'll totally sell it. Uh, anyhow, um, it's not worth two hundred dollars. <laughs> it's not worth fifty. Um, I also pulled another Wolverine, and I think that time I pulled Namor. Right on. So, yeah, Wolverine right just on. always the last man standing in every single game I played. Dude, that is awesome. That is pretty dope. My pulls were not great. We did, however, do trading. So I got Danger, Gambit, and Kitty Pride. I traded my Danger, she's rare, for Rachel Summers, who's also rare. So pretty fair trade, it seemed, uh, so I could have an all-Wolverine team. I technically chose Cyclops' side, but that was only because we had, like, we have pretty low amount of people. Actually, really about 10 people show up, which is actually really solid, but a majority of the people chose Wolverine. I, I'd rather choose Wolverine, but just because we'd have a ton of Cyclops prizing left over, and I probably wouldn't even be able to get Wolverine prizing most of the time, I chose Cyclops. I mean, I ended up getting both this month since so few people showed up, uh, but uh, it, it went pretty well. Rachel Summers' free TK is pretty dope. It helped, really helped the positioning. I could basically make only two, or like I make three attacks each turn, right? Uh, because Lockjaw is... I'm trying to think he's autonomous, autonomous on theme. Yeah, yeah. He, he's autonomous on theme. on theme. Gambit is great. Rachel is great. Kitty Pride is a pretty okay attacker. She has enhancement. And I could never kill Wolverine. I played against two younger kids. One dude, one was definitely like 13, 14. I can never remember how old Ian is. And then uh, Tristan is like 16 or something. And I it was like 16 or 15. And I just I couldn't beat him. Like I just could not beat Wolverine. Uh, it was it was literally it was literally impossible. And I like to think I'm a good player. I'm I'm pretty terrible. I, I am. I'm pretty terrible at HeroClix. Um. So, but, like, losing, it felt really rough. Like, that Wolverine is no joke. He's he's tough to take down, and apparently it really helps if you hit attacks. So, insert, like, all these other, <laughs> but, like, excuses here. So, yeah, that was my, we did 200 points. We did trading. Um, on all of my games, I started in normal starting area. I guess I never thought to do, like, whatever the Battle Royale map. I need to ask and see if that's what we're supposed to do. But with the amount of mobility my team has, it was honestly uh, pretty easy to get up. So yeah, that is this Community Tuesday's question. Once again, we put it up every single Tuesday. So right in. Next up in Community is Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, so yeah, no, we were trying. I honestly couldn't remember. 
um, what it was, General Legend's going to write in like, oh, I can't believe you've done this. That's not my, that's not my theme music. How could you, how dare you? And I'm um, like, I know, man, I'm sorry, uh, but this is kind of rushed. So this is what we're doing. His tip of the week is a critical hit adds to the damage dealt, not your damage value. The crit bonus is after you make the choice whether to deal normal damage, at which point it becomes a printed plus one. Uh, printed plus one dealt or replace it becomes D6 plus one. So it's pretty dope. Critical hit. I love it. I always do. Um, it's I never roll a critical hit when I want to. Like when it's like really cool, I always get crit hit pulse waves and everybody takes two and then knock back or I always get crit hit blades and I'm like, I'll roll a crit hit but like on a normal attack and then they'll prob it and I'll be like, whatever. So, but like it's always a good reminder. So I appreciate that. Definitely crit hit more mind controls than I'd care to admit. Dude. Like, I totally mind control you, like, super good, and does nothing else. There's no extra benefit to it. There there definitely should be. Sad. Sad. Yeah. Uh, and that is, I mean, that's it. Like, that's a good tip of the week. It's always good to keep in mind. Next up, just rolling through these, is Malcolm Rush uh, question block. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, once again, that's just another on-the-fly uh, sound. Right, don't worry about it. Malcolm, you, I'm sure you'll write <laughs> in and give us some great suggestions, uh, some a little bit of your music. So the first question, kind of the only question, but it's got a few different uh, parts to it. So he um, was able to play a game with Ben Jones from Aussie, Aussie, Aussie from Australia, which is really awesome. So they were able to meet up when he was in Japan to play a game uh, crushing, crushing the hero flux borders. I really love it. I was really happy that they were able to make this happen. I was really happy to just be even in any part related to this happening. So I really appreciated that. Um, but his first question is try to make an international team. So I made a team. I don't know if you have one or not, Simeon, but I went ahead and I made a team of characters, each from a different country. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read that really quick. First up is Dalasam. He is from India. Vega is from South America. T-Hawk is, he's normally from Mexico in Street Fighter 2, but he's definitely more like Native American, like looking in like First Nations people kind of uh, dress. Fei Long is from Japan. Kami is from like whatever, the UK. And then Ken is the American I chose for this team. Uh, there's obviously no pattern there. I just chose totally random figures. Uh, so yeah, totally. Uh, Simeon, do you have a uh, international team? I I tried. So I went with Sunfire. I believe he's from China. Um, then I went with uh, Puck, the the best Canadian that there is. Clearly. Uh, clearly better than Wolverine in everywhere. Uh, Gateway. I think Gateway's from Australia. He's Aboriginal. I I think. I don't know. He's a tiny little man. He's from some country. <laughs> He swings a bolo. He's got to be from Australia. Is that racist? I don't know. Sorry, Australians. Uh, then I went with Sheriff Steve Rogers. There is no no rhyme or reason to this team whatsoever, but there's a solid attacker, a solid taxi. Um, Puck is there, so <laughs> there's that. Um, and then and to round it out, I, I, I really didn't know what to do. So I, I put... Uh, Put Captain, uh, yeah, the one Captain guy. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kirk. Cap oh Title Captain Kirk. Uh, he's, from he's from the United Kansas, Federations. So, like, yeah, he... but, I mean, it, it's like a whole world thing, so it's, you know. Okay. All future's right, a country. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Future's right. a country, Calder. <laughs> well, I'm an ace here, so. Uh... Okay, uh, second part of the question. How many Heroes characters in their countries do you name? So I just named, uh, so go to, this, go to the Street Fighter set. Um, it's really cool because they actually have their country on the back of their card. You, you, you don't get this from looking at HC Realms. But like on the back of every Street Fighter character's card is the flag of the country they represent, which is really cool. Um, and I always liked that about that set. So you just go to that and look at it. And then for other countries that exist, there's King Britain. He's from uh, Great Britain. Not so Great Britain. Um, and of course, there's Captain America, who's from America. There's uh, Wolverine and Deadpool, who are of course Canadian, and you know, Gateway from Australia, and a whole, whole bunch of other <laughs> people. Uh, I think Quasar is actually from um, the Savage Land, which is also known as Alaska. Is it... 
I no, I, that's completely wrong. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> yeah. oh Honestly, like so many comic book characters are like, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from like one of the other nine boroughs, and it's like we've got so many New York superheroes and like U.S. superheroes that I all the other ones slip through the cracks for me. So. Howard the Duck is from Duck World. Uh, it's not a country, but he is from Cleveland later in comics. That's all I got, guys. Like, seriously. Um, sure, there's a bunch of different countries, a bunch of different characters. There's, like, tons of them. Don't worry about it. You'll figure it out. Uh, is, Wakanda, think... is Wakanda a real country? Oh, yeah, 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 totally. We'll just say it's a it's whatever country. I mean, Wakanda is a town in South Dakota. It's spelt differently, but it does exist. So Black Panther <laughs> is just actually just some guy from a 200-person town in South Dakota, so that's confirmed. Uh, all right, try to pick the best and worst hero clicks from that country uh so obviously any captain america is the best person from america and uh let's just say any tony stark is just the worst person from america yeah fight me um that's it that's what i got uh clearly deadpool is the best canadian and the worst canadian is uh is i think sasquatch no okay sasquatch. oh okay all right i mean i just i hate invincible iron man sasquatch's dial the non like the non prime one. The prime one's alright, but the, the non prime one starts with like energy shield and outwit for a hundred points and it's super rough to not get like smacked right across like your entire dial when you play it. I played a lot of Alpha Flight and <laughs> I stopped putting Sasquatch on the team. Why who what what sane person in this world plays a lot of Alpha Flight is what I'm curious about. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like what do you mean a lot? Like how much Alpha Flight are we talking here? Because there's like 15 Alpha Flight characters that exist, and however many versions of those people. That's that's generous. Thank you for that. Is that um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just got an LE set in. Oh my gosh, that was back in like 2016. So, um, no, I mean, they're like every now and then they throw Wolverine a bone and they give him it. Most of it was in the Invincible Iron Man. Otherwise, like we have not gotten Alpha Flight since then. Okay, so, so yeah. the the only modern age Alpha Flight person is apparently her, and I don't know why she has Alpha Flight, but she does. Yeah, I could not tell you to okay. be honest. That nice. that must have been after I stopped reading. <laughs> ah, don't we all? I mean, Alpha Flight's pretty terrible. Shotman was actually pretty cool. I liked what he did, shutting off Flight and all that jazz. He was he was kind of neat. Um, so cool. That was Malcolm Rush's question, uh, pseudo question block. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Malcolm Rush, for writing in. We have a few more things to get through here. We have two new patrons on our Patreon, John Carl and Anthony Brown. I know John Carl pretty well. He's a pretty awesome dude. I really appreciate that. And then Anthony Brown. There will, of course, be a ranking up ceremony where they get their whole citizen titles. That is the second episode of every single month. Uh, as well as Patreon news, I wanted to go ahead, and this is going to be my little filler spot here. I want to start giving stuff away. It was kind of weird to try to work it out with Chris, but from now on, everybody that gives like $5 or more, and that's like every month it's 5 bucks. we're going to have the titles are going to keep ranking up. You can still earn your title. And then I'm going to try to work out a system where everybody can sort of get stuff. But next thing going out next month is going to be stickers. You're going to choose a howdy howdy, let's get rowdy, or a uh current dial h logo sticker we'll see how current that logo lasts we're trying to rework it right now so if anyone has suggestions i'm open to it but i already kind of have a logo picked out uh because chris uh, not chris Chris, but chris Capron made it which is really dope um and also on patreon we're doing giveaways so every month there's going to be a raffle this month and by this month i mean next month so august at the end of August and what's not, there is going to be a raffle for, drum roll, whatever. It is going to be a Ghost Rider Mammoth. We are at $40-ish on the Patreon, so I feel pretty comfortable giving away Ghost Rider Mammoth that cost me 40 bucks, anyways. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I don't know if I'm going to do a second place, but like 100% right now, the August giveaway is going to be a Ghost Rider Mammoth. So jump on the Patreon for as little as $1 to be thrown in the giveaway and whatnot. And what else did I want to say? As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is on Podbean, iTunes, and all sorts of podcast apps. We also upload it to YouTube. You can find us at Twitter at Dial H4. That's the number four Hero Clicks. Our Facebook is 
Facebook.com slash dial H for Heroclix four is spelt out. Our email is dial H for Heroclix at gmail.com. That is all spelt out again. Literally only Twitter is the four. Patreon is, as always, uh, patreon.com slash dial H for Heroclix. We also have a red bubble, which is if you just want to order the stickers, you can straight up buy a sticker there, which is really cool. And also you can get like t-shirts, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so that's really cool. That is, that is the podcast. I'm going to figure out. Uh, this is still a work in progress. Chris is gone. I love Chris. He did a really cool thing. He did a great thing for the podcast. He's given me an amazing opportunity. But, you know, I mean, he's like, I mean, like, come on. He's, he's Chris. So, like, we don't have to, we don't have to talk about him, like, that highly. We can just shove him out. Yeah. yeah. I feel I mean, like, like, I feel like Chris is, like, ice cream, right? And I'm, like, dipping dots. Like, clearly, I was, I was better. cool in, like, the 2000s, but who buys dipping dots now? Like, you know? And they only sell Dippin' good... Dots at, at, like, the weirdest place. Like, they sell at, like, a zoo or something. Yeah. They only like, sell Dippin' Dots in the most random Only place. the places where you, like, are hard up for ice cream, and it's your only option. And it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Dippin' Dots, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is not for hours. Okay, so Gen Con. Gen Con is this week. If you are listening to this, I am already gone for Gen Con by the time you're listening to this. Uh, and if you want to be in Team Sealed with me, which is just a two-man sealed, if you're going to Gen Con, let me know. Simeon, are you going to Gen Con? I am not. I, can, okay, I will be at Worlds. Worlds. So me and Simeon will both be at Worlds, uh, as well as Devin Adams, Happy Little Hero Clicks, whoever that guy is. Never heard of him before, honestly. Uh, so Worlds is in September. Do you remember the date or not? Ah, it's, there's plenty of time. It's like the se- uh, first weekend? I don't know. It's like around like yeah. 5th to 7th or yeah. somewhere in there. So I'm gonna be at Gen Con this week. Stop by, say hi. I'm gonna I'm gonna be in cosplay every single day. So if it's hard for you to recognize me, that is why I will I will try to keep updates and posts on the Twitter. And I don't know, if we'll figure out. I'm so used to posting things on Facebook, but it's all right. So we're gonna have Community Tuesdays up next Tuesday, and that is enough ranting. Gen Con this week. Ooh, really cool. Simeon, is there anything you want to say before we go? No, I think I'm I think I'm ready to close this out. All right, then read us off. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails.